YouTube, what it do, man? It's your boy, and they just dope. Back with another video, and JD Nation was down with it, man. Yes, sir, we are back. We are back with another video. As y'all can see by the title, we're gonna go ahead and get a little deep in the conversation, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, look, we're gonna be talking about shame, guilt, not letting the devil guilt trip you into backsliding into your old ways and things like that, man. So that's gonna be like the, the main topic for today's video. I don't really know what I'm gonna title this video, but we're just gonna talk on the lines of that, man. So, shame and guilt, shame and guilt. Those are like the two things that I feel like the enemy, I'll speak on my personal experience, um, that the enemy or the devil tried to use as like a tactic to get me back into my old ways, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I didn't want to talk about those things as far as like when I was addicted to all of those things like that, like I said in my uh, testimony videos, I felt very ashamed about it. I felt embarrassed about it, about coming clean about what, what it was that I was dealing with before I came to Christ, you know? So he'll use that as like a scare tactic to keep you from making that change or, or taking that first step to change. And so that's what I realized. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling shameful about it and Feeling shameful about it will hold you back from not talking about it and coming to God. It'll have you thinking that God doesn't want to talk to you or it'll make you feel like you can't go to God about what it is that you're dealing with. When he says, come to him, like I said in my last video, come to him all who are weary and burdened. So that was one of the things that I was dealing with, shame and guilt. But that's the beautiful thing about God. You can come to him with your problems. You can come to him with your addictions, with your with your things that you're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Because he wants you to give them to him so that he can show you that he is God and he can handle anything that you're dealing with, you feel me? You don't have to deal with it by yourself. You don't have to go to sleep at night worrying and and thinking that, you know, things aren't gonna change. When he says, come to him, lay it all at his feet and he'll work it out for you. And the main reason why uh, this, this uh, video topic came about is because that was something that I was dealing with recently like dealing with shame dealing with guilt also dealing with temptation it's like before you come to christ the enemy keeps you trapped in this not knowing or not having some type of conviction but then once you do come to christ once you are filled with the holy spirit now you're getting convicted now you're getting tempted by the devil it's like the devil t starts working overtime to get you to come back or go back to your past life. And so that was something that I was dealing with when I truly gave my life to him. Because before, when I would get tempted, I would easily fall back into my sin. I would easily, like no conviction, no uh, resistance to, to the sin, I would just fall into it. But now that I'm on this like straight and narrow road, now I'm finding myself battling, or I would find myself battling with, with uh, the temptation and tossing and turning and literally fighting the devil, telling him, no, no, you feel me? And that's what you really have to do. You have to tell him like, no, I'm not gonna go back to the old life because the life that I have now is way better than where I was in my past life. And so, like I said earlier, uh, God, God forgets our sin. He forgets our past life. We have to come to him and lay it all at his feet. And then once we lay it all at his feet, he sweeps it, literally sweeps it away, said, all right, new slate let's start over and so it brought me to this uh because this morning every morning i wake up i pray and i ask god you know what it is that he wants to say to me in the morning in my prayer time uh, when i'm reading my bible and it's so crazy because i've been like trying to keep keep track of like what i've been reading like uh, different books that i'm reading in the bible i'm trying to like stick with one book per like week or whatever the case may be but this morning because last night it was it was like last night the night before the day uh i was literally like the enemy was just like tormenting me like bruh i was like bro no i'm not going back into my sin you know i'm i'm gonna stay firm i'm standing firm in what on what god has has a laid in front of me so i just began to call in the name of jesus like jesus please help me, <laughs> right? And that's what we have to do. We have to literally run to him when the devil is tempting you to fall back into your sin. When when he has a whole lot of temptation in front of you, that you gotta look the other way. Like, no, I'm looking towards where my helps come from or where my help comes from. So like I said, this morning I was in my, in my devotional time, in my prayer time and uh, he brought me to, he brought me to the book of, I believe it was John. I, like, I thought I had it written down, but I don't. Basically, let me see. Like, hold on one second. 
So he brought me to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Right? So he had to literally uh, like remind me that, look, all you got to do is just confess your sins. Talk to me. Come to me about it. So that's what I did. I, I literally closed my eyes and I began to pray and just just open up the guy and let him know how I was feeling in that moment or really like all last week because last week the enemy was just working like he was just trying to get me to fall back into into like my old habits and things like that and so this morning he literally had to remind me of that right just just come to him just lay it all at his feet like I was telling you guys in the beginning of this video also I was brought or he brought me to this this website because what I do as well is just when I have like a certain thing that I'm dealing with, I go to Angela, I go to Google and I ask about what it is that I'm dealing with, but I ask for the perspective of what does it say in the Bible, right? And so I typed in shame and guilt in the Bible or like scriptures about shame and guilt in the Bible. And it brought me to this website called The Redeemed. And I'm gonna just read some of the things that, that like really just stood out to me. Uh, is this section called uh, sins wiped away and it says when you come to know and trust jesus christ as lord and savior even the most unthinkable sins are wiped away all sin is sin right all sin is sin but when you truly come to him when you lay it out at his feet they're wiped away he like he forgets about it and i don't want to get ahead of myself so uh but next it has first corinthians chapter six verse 9 through 11 and it says do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived neither the sexual immoral nor adulterers nor adulterers nor men who practice homosexuality nor thieves nor greedy nor drunkards nor nor revilers i think that's how you say it nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of god and such we were some of you but you were wise you were sanctified you were justified in the name of the lord jesus christ and by the Holy Spirit of God. It's basically just saying like, all of those things that you were dabbling in won't get you into the kingdom of heaven. But when you come to him, when you lay it all at his feet, you're washed clean. He forgets about your sin. Then a little further down it says, I know what you're thinking. God can never wipe all of my sins away. There are too many or they are just too terrible. Well, I have good news for you. And then it has Hebrews chapter eight, verse 12. And it says, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That was just confirmation for me this morning. Like, wow, okay, God, I hear you. And literally when I read that, I was like, wow, God, okay, I hear you, man. And so that's how we conversate, right? I, I have a thought and because he knows that I'm always on my phone, he'll literally take me to Google and just type what I'm feeling and ask for what it says in the Bible about it. And also, I want to say for like the, the new Christians, the baby Christians, even for myself, because I'm now on this true walk with, with Christ. When we're like fresh into our journey, like I said earlier, I'll speak for me. I was expecting it to be like perfect, you know, all all uh, all sugar and cotton candy, you know what I'm saying? Like everything is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy because I'm on this walk with Christ, right? But this walk is not going to be easy. Right. If anybody tells you that, that your Christ walk is going to be easy, hey, they're lying to you. This walk requires some type of trials and tribulations that God will, will have you go through to help build that character that wasn't once there. Right. He used those things as, as teaching moments or as lessons, right, so that we can know what to do and what not to do. Right. And if we mess up again, we can go back, retrace our steps, and then he'll have us go through it again to help build that character up. So are you gonna stumble or are you gonna fall? Yes. You're not gonna have this straight and narrow, easy walk, <laughs> you know? But that's the beautiful thing about it because if it was easy, a lot of people would be on this journey, but because it's so hard, there hey, it's only a few of us, right? It's only a few of us, and that's what made this journey so so much better to know that, bro, I don't know about y'all, but I love a challenge. I love a challenge and God, he challenges me daily. I'm not gonna lie to you, he challenges me daily, right? But I just look at it as, as uh, when I do pass the test or when I do get uh, through those, those things or when the devil does try to tempt me to fall back into sin, it just reminds me to fall or run back to God, right? And it just gives me that much more uh, willpower to to endure this walk, to, to endure this journey. Like I said, I was expecting this, this walk to be easy, 
to just all right listen to God to say say or what it is he has uh planned for me and it's crazy when we do hear or when we do get a vision from God and when he shows us the promise and things like that we expect for it to happen the next day right but it's not going to happen the next day right it's it's a marathon it's not a sprint this is like this journey is not a sprint <laughs> I'm telling you it's like it's literally not a sprint man so you literally have to endure the process and enjoy the process and enjoy it with everything that comes with it the good the bad the ugly but real quick man before i end off the video i just want to give give these i think it's seven or six ways to uh, help you deal with shame and guilt uh so the first one it says to confess right if you're aware of your sins in your life confess them admit what you're doing is wrong sometimes feeling of shame or sometimes feelings of shame and guilt manifest because you simply need to admit the sin to get it off your chest Acknowledgement goes a long way in moving past feelings of shame. And bro, when I tell you that uh, video of my testimony, that was that was literally me confessing everything because I had held it in, I had bothered it up for so many years, and so that was my way of confessing, a way of getting it off my chest, a way of coming to God. Y'all were probably watching this video of me talking to y'all about my testimony, but I'm really like, for me, I was confessing my sins. I was literally coming to God and just letting him know like what it was that I was dealing with and just asking him to just make me over, right? Make me a new creation in him, you know? So get it off your chest. If you got to talk to somebody, even if you don't have nobody to talk to, just talk to him. You feel me? Come to him. Come to him with, with your worries, with your burdens, with those things that you're trying to deal with by yourself. Give it to him. Because I'm telling you, after I after I just got that off my chest, like I said at the end of that video, like I feel like the weight of the world was just lifted off my shoulders. Like all the chains was broken. Like everything was just, I felt free. And so it has uh, Psalms chapter 32 verses 3 through 5 and I'm gonna just read that real quick for when I kept silent my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long for day and night your hand was heavy upon me my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive the iniquity of my sin wow <laughs> you feel me so like when you are trying to keep a muzzle on on your testimony like don't like don't keep a muzzle on your testimony. You never know that okay, you're helping yourself, but also you could be helping somebody else that is going through that. Right? That are going through the same that you're going through. And you may not know that if you keep it keep it all like like compressed inside of you. Right? Let it all out. Just let it all out. That's what like that's what I did in that video, man. Like I said, even if you don't have nobody to talk to, just talk to him and let it all out. Like lay it all at his feet. Let him know what it is because he knows he just wants us to come to him right instead of dealing with it on our own because like i said i have been dealing with it dealing with my 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 problems my my uh my things that was keeping me bound to the world for so long and then number two it says ask god to show you any other sins in your life yeah we all have sin in our lives somewhere. We may not even be aware of it. This step takes some serious courage. It is scary to be completely open and honest before the Lord and to ask him to reveal sin in your life. You might not like the answer. You might even want to ignore what is revealed, bruh. <laughs> hey, that last part right there. Basically, that, that right there just reminded me of when I had said in my uh, testimony video, when he put a mirror in front of me and he just showed me who I was to myself. Like he, he opened up my heart and just showed me me. And when I say I did not like what I saw, I was like, yo, hey, I gotta change. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta, I gotta do whatever it takes to, to just start over, right? Because we have to, like, it's, it's up to us to come to him. He's always been right there, but we have to come to him. And, and when I just asked him to just show me me, and when I say I did not like what I saw, I was like, yo, I, I like, I gotta change. You know, I like I got to change. And that right there was the first, I guess, nail in the coffin to get rid of that shame and guilt to tell my story. That was my first step of allowing him to just push me forward past that shame, past that guilt, to get past that feeling of shame and guilt to just confess, you know, to just open up to him. And then it has a scripture, Psalms chapter 139 verses 23 through 24 search me god and know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting right there that just shows like it just like pretty much just said everything i just said like just just allow him to just 
search your heart. Every single morning for the past, what, couple of weeks, I've been just finding myself to just praying different. Just having a conversation with him. Just telling him to search my heart. You know, cleanse my heart of any anything that is not of you, right? Search my heart and just basically do a do a clean sweep and we have to do that every single day though it's just not a one-time thing because every day is new obstacles new new trials new new temptation that the devil is trying to throw at you and you have to every day pick up your cross right that's what picking up your cross means just just every day you picking up your cross picking up that that weight and just carrying it with you and just you know asking god to be with you every step of the way and it says god listens he hears us he knows our anxious thoughts that shame and guilt you may be feeling and he wants us to come to him he can help you know and it's just simple as that you know it's not simple but it's it's simple as that like we think that there's some huge difficult math equation that that it takes god to just fix our problems when he can just fix our problems with the snap of his finger just like that. And then number three, because my camera about to die, like, bruh, I gotta get a new battery. <laughs> but anyway, number three, it says restitution, right? So that's number three, restitution. Whenever possible, try to fix the harm your sins has caused. Say you're sorry, try and make amends. Sometimes saying, I'm sorry, I messed up. I will try my best not to mess up again. It's the only actionable thing we can do. You know, forgive yourself, forgive you because there's some things that you probably done that, that you probably feel ashamed of. So you got to forgive yourself sometimes, you know, and make those things right within you. And also make amends with other people that you probably heard along the way. Forgiveness is, is like a huge key when it comes to giving your life to Christ, man, um, because you got to forgive. And the harsh reality is you can't make it into the kingdom of heaven with unforgiveness in your heart, right? You got to you gotta get it out of you regardless of who may hurt you what 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 they done and i understand like it like it hurt it hurts especially in that moment of of forgiving that person or even yourself right it hurts it hurts but you gotta do it you gotta do it number four it says trust the promise first john chapter one verse nine it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness right so i think i just read that i think i just read it yeah yeah so i just read that literally they have it right here so god like god and i just realized that right now that that he was in alignment right so it doesn't say god will forgive us and then turn his back on us no right he won't do that it says he will forgive us and cleanse us stay rooted in your relationship with god and he will help to direct you on the pathway where you can leave your shame and guilt behind. Need I say more? Like it says, like he isn't going to forgive you and then constantly remind you of your past. He's going to forget those things. I forgot where it says in the Bible, but but he says, or it says that he forgets our sin. He even throws it away. I'm just paraphrasing, right? But he's going to throw those sins away. So like, that's how you know, like how to decipher the voice of the enemy and the voice of God, right? The enemy, the devil, he's going to constantly remind you of your past like oh you did this you did that oh they'll never forgive you or you shouldn't forgive that person or you did this so they ain't gonna believe you you feel me like he's gonna constantly remind you of your past but god he says look tell me hey tell me your sins one time confess one time and i'll forget about it let's start a new life let's start a new walk clean slate start new you know and that's the beautiful thing about god man like his grace and his mercy is so amazing so amazing but number five <laughs> Uh, it says read and reflect. Okay, so you've confessed your sins. You are trying your best not to repeat those sins. You've tried to make amends to those you've sinned against, yet feelings of shame and guilt creep in. Like I said, all last week, bro, the devil was just trying to find different cracks to bring my past in and just have me reflect on those things and dwell on those things. But but I just kept having to run back to him um, and running to him is just running, running to his word. like like reading even when the devil tempted jesus because the devil did tempt jesus but what did jesus do to fight back he fought back with the word right he quoted back scripture so that's what we have to do we have to run back to our bible run run back to that quiet place run back into our silent place with him lastly number six says pray god wants a relationship with us he wants us to talk to him intimately ask the lord to help free you from the feelings of shame and guilt Ask him to help you feel the joy you felt before those feelings took root. Praying to him isn't just you you coming to him and asking for things, asking for for a new car, a new house, new new relationship, and things like that. Because God isn't a genie, 
right? You can't just come to him when you want something, when you want stuff, when you want him to fix something, right? Come to him and just talk to him, right? How do you build a relationship with with your boyfriend, with your boo, with your bae, right? You're going to talk to him to get to know them. It's the same thing with God, man. You got to talk to him. Like I said in my testimony video, it's going to feel weird at first because it's just going to feel like you're just talking just to talk, go to feel like you're talking to yourself. But once you do talk to him, once you do start to build that relationship with him, he's just gonna find different ways to talk to you. One of the main ways that he talks to me is through video, through like videos on YouTube because he knows I'm always on YouTube watching videos and listening to podcasts. Just like the day he was speaking to me like heavy uh, while I was listening to the uh, More Purpose podcast, right? They was just talking and, and just, getting like like getting in all of my business right but it was god talking to me and i was like you know what god i hear you i hear you just pray to him right have that conversation right have that dialect with him just to just to build that relationship with him and just to know what his voice sounds like just just to know like how he talks to you the way that he speaks to me probably is going to be different than how he speaks to you you know so we all have to to um build build that rapport with him and really the best way i can put it is that when you're out driving you know you see all these cars all these different vehicles on the road and one of the main things that all these cars or these people in the cars have in common is that they all have a destination that they're going and they all have a specific route or dip or a specific path that they have to take to get to that destination so i look at it as the same with us when we're when we're on our walk with christ right we have our own different paths we may have different different journeys different different trials, tribulations, but the main finish line, the main destination is heaven, you know? So I say y'all that to say, don't let the devil guilt trip you into going back into your old ways. Remember that God doesn't, that God doesn't remember your past. He forgets it. So just walk your walk knowing that, you know, this is a new walk. My old life is, is gone, right? That old me, dead and gone, right? The new me is walking on this path and yes, I'm going to stumble. Yes, I'm going to fall, trip here and there, right? But always run back to him. Always go back to the word. Always, whenever you feel weak, go to him. Confess, right? Let it all out. And just know that he loves you, like regardless. Yes, we're going to fall into temptation. Yes, we're going to stumble and fall, trip here and there, right? But all you need to know is that he loves you and he forgets your past, right? You just need to go to him. Continue to go to him and build that relationship. You know, build your relationship. And it's a daily, daily walk. It's a daily journey. Like, you're going to have to pick up your cross every single day. Die of yourself every single day. Die of your flesh. Kill your flesh every single day. You know? So, hopefully, this, this video was some type of help to y'all, man. It definitely helped me while I was talking. You know, because I was talking to myself as well, too, man. So, comment down below. All that stuff, man. All my other channels will be down in the description below as well, too, man. Uh, thank y'all for the love and support that y'all have been giving me over the past couple of videos. Or, really, two videos that y'all have been, like, leaving comments and stuff, man. Um, but, hey, this this channel, like I said, is dedicated to him. It's, it's all for his glory, you know. So, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. And I'm pretty much done. So, with that being said, it's your boy. Nick just dope signing out. Deuces.